Um, and these countries have uh, uh, have stepped forward and recognized that they played, even if a minor, you know, a very disturbing role in this in this uh, rendition program, and they have uh, and they have actively investigated it. Uh, and there has been no argument that it would it would threaten you know national security or state secrets or anything else for these investigations to occur. Uh, in the meantime, the U.S. government, whose program it is, of course, um, continues to argue that um, it would. It would threaten state secrets for for uh, uh, any information about the program to come to come to light. Um, so, in the Almazri case, the government, unsurprisingly to us, we predicted this, came in, again argued that the case had to be dismissed, even though all of these governments in Europe had confirmed the allegations, um, because it would threaten state secrets for the CIA to confirm that this rendition took place. Um, unfortunately, the district court and then the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals um, uh, uh, bought that argument, uh, and we, in fact, the ACLU has just uh, uh, earlier this week filed a cert petition uh, in hopes that the Supreme Court will step into this debate about the expansive use of the state secrets privilege and um, and slap it down. The, sta the, the Supreme Court, in fact, hasn't considered the breadth of the doctrine, the state secrets privilege doctrine, for over 50 years now, and. We believe that it's uh, a good time to revisit it. Now, whether that would come out the right way is a whole other thing we can debate later on. Um, but I think it might. I actually think it might. Uh, because it's a threat to the court's um, uh, 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 autonomy and, and, and duty to serve as a check on executive power to have such a broad view of, 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 of secrecy that the court can play no role in reviewing the legality of these, these programs. Uh, the final example, which I'll just give very quickly, because I'm sure I'm already here over time, um, uh, is another state secrets uh, uh, invocation, and that, as David mentioned before, was our, our legal challenge to NSA wiretapping. Um, we were uh, happily debating and questioning and filing lawsuits over um, the loosening of FISA wiretap powers under the Patriot Act, um, uh, or I should say the expansion of FISA wiretap powers, the loosening of, uh, of the standards required for the government to get these very invasive wiretaps on Americans. Um, and, and all of our energy had been focused on that issue. Well, lo and behold, as we all now know, the government was completely ignoring even those um, uh, 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 um, relaxed limitations and, in fact, had gone completely outside the regular foreign intelligence wiretap scheme and had authorized the National Security Agency to begin to wiretap uh, uh, Americans without a warrant. Uh, this was disclosed in December of, of, of 2005 by the, by the New York Times based on still anonymous sources. Um, we geared up, filed a lawsuit on behalf of a number of prominent uh, lawyers and activists and scholars uh, who must, to do their job, uh, make an international phone calls and send emails every day uh, to countries um, very much at the center of the government's war on terror. And uh, we, got, uh, uh, we got, again, the government coming in very early on in the case and invoking the state secrets well, this is particularly ironic because, of course, the government was out there arguing its expansive view of presidential authority, uh, arguing that legally this program was um, constitutional because the president under the Constitution had the power to ignore the law, essentially. It was a purely legal, a legal argument. It didn't depend on any detailed facts about the actual wiretapping program. Well, despite what they were saying in the public realm, they come into court and they say, Court, you can't hear a legal challenge to this program because it would risk state secrets for us to get involved in the, de in the details about the wiretapping program. Well, we came back in and we said, no, no, no none of the facts are, 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 are an issue. The government's already admitted all we need to know. It's wiretapped Americans. It didn't follow the, the FISA rules. It didn't get any kind of a warrant. That's all the court needs uh, to, to rule that it's uh, uh, this violation of the FISA statute and of the Constitution. And we got a, a great ruling from Judge Anna Dix Taylor in, in Michigan in the district court, and that um, case was, of course, appealed to the Sixth Circuit. Um, and I argued it in January, and we're awaiting a ruling and kind of, you know, getting a little more nervous every day that we don't get a ruling. Um, one little final note on what happened with NSA, which is, uh, you know, another kind of sign of the, 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 the extent to which they kind of engage in uh, shenanigans to avoid having the courts rule on many of these issues. David could tell many more stories like this. And, uh, um, literally three or four days before the Court of Appeals argument, suddenly uh, Gonzalez, 
calls a press conference and, and announces that after all of these months and months and months, over a year of arguing that the president doesn't have to comply with the FISA statute, they can wiretap whoever they want, whenever they want, um, that suddenly they had brought this program, this terrorist surveillance program, as they call it, under the, under the uh, jurisdiction of this secret FISA court in a secret location somewhere here in Washington, D.C., um, and, and therefore tried to moot out our case. Um, fortunately, the judges during the oral argument didn't seem to be uh, at all impressed with this argument that it made the case moot because, you know, uh, while they were saying, yes, the FISA court is involved to some extent now, the other side of their mouth, they were saying, but we retain the, uh, the, 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 the president retains the authority forevermore to reinstitute a totally warrantless program again whenever he wants. Um, so, so um, uh, and then uh, the, the program, and I won't get into the, the details, but the program, the way the, the, the president uh, and the administration officials have made it clear that the program gets reauthorized every 90 days. 